Have you ever needed to make a big decision? Maybe it's where to go for college, or even to go to college at all. Maybe it's what car to buy, maybe it's who to marry, or even if you should break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend. These decisions are big, but they're big because each option we pick could completely change our path of life. If we pick to marry this person, our life could go one way, and if we pick not to marry them, it could go a completely different way. Some would call these decisions forks in our lives, and if you were to zoom out and see all of your decisions, you could see where your life could go a completely different route. Now when it comes to big decisions like this, you can look at your life as having two different futures. The future is uncertain, so you have to pick very carefully. When it comes to having two futures, there's a concept in crypto and the development world to explain major changes in code. We call these changes forks. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain the topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what crypto forks are, the difference between soft forks and hard forks, and discuss if they're dangerous. First off, what is a fork? In the development world of programming, a fork is an updated or new version of code that is simply old code that has been changed a little bit. In the sense of crypto, a fork could refer to two potential ways that a blockchain could continue. It's basically a change in protocol. However, we can categorize these two forms of changes, soft forks and hard forks. Let's go over them real quick and then we're going to talk about which one is better and which one may be more dangerous. A soft fork doesn't require the miners to do anything different. They can keep mining in the same fashion that they have been and they don't have to do anything. Nevertheless, the intended changes will be made. This would be like if your parents got divorced. As a child, you don't really have to do anything. You just continue living your life under a new set of rules. Next up, we have a hard fork. Now a hard fork does require the miners to do something, whether it's updating their software or change some number in the software or some other internal action. A miner must make changes to continue contributing to the network if a hard fork happens. Now the idea here is that the old blocks are so different from the new blocks that the miner's old software can't work with it. It's kind of like if you buy a new car, you probably have to get a new key. The old key just won't work and it might not even fit. It may be even a completely different type of key depending on how old your car is. In a similar manner, a hard fork changes the block structure in a manner that requires all the people participating in the network to intentionally make a change to continue mining. If we go back to our divorce analogy, which is a bit morbid, but we always like to use funny and exciting examples on this channel, a hard fork would be like when your spouse tells you to either stop drinking or they're going to divorce you. You can continue what you were doing if you want, but they aren't going to stick around. This is actually a really good example of a fork, because you technically could keep mining with the old protocol. You could still keep drinking, but everyone else will move to the new protocol. Now we couldn't discuss forks without discussing Ethereum Classic. This is actually how Ethereum Classic was created. During Ethereum's early days, there was an organization called the DAO that was essentially a venture capitalist fund of $150 million. Around a third of that money was stolen by hackers. But this is where the fork happened. Vitalik Buterin, the creator of Ethereum, said, that's not right, we need to give them their money back. And so he did, and this became the new blockchain that we know today. The other blockchain, the older one, which doesn't have the money reverted, is known as Ethereum Classic. And we call it Classic because it runs on the old rules of Ethereum. Blockchain purists think that we shouldn't be able to intervene like this, but we did, and now because of that, there's two blockchains, there's two forks, simply from one decision. Do you think reverting this blockchain decision was right? What are your thoughts? Please let us know in the comments below as it's a very controversial topic. Moving on, I kind of want to get into an interesting question, and that is which ones are more dangerous? Now, first off, you might think that hard forks are the most dangerous because they have the greatest ability to change a protocol. However, Vitalik says soft forks are actually the more dangerous ones because you do not have to agree to the change. There is less friction. Using a few soft forks and some creative ways to work without changing too much of the current architecture, you can actually make some major changes to a program. However, you will always be bottlenecked by the fact that you must be confined by how the current blocks work. So both have a bunch of power. Now Ethereum Classic is a great example of a fork, but there are also other famous forks as well. For example, Litecoin. Now Litecoin is actually a fork of Bitcoin, meaning they copied the original code and then changed it purposefully so that it's a whole different coin. In fact, some people would say that they made some improvements. One of the changes was that they made four times as many total Litecoins than Bitcoins. The fork also made the block size larger and the block time shorter which means that the transaction fees are much lower 
and the transaction time is a lot quicker. Basically, it's a faster and cheaper version of Bitcoin, but there is a trade-off. And we don't have time to discuss the trade-offs, so if you're interested, definitely subscribe for our Litecoin video coming out soon. Next up, we have Bitcoin Cash. So Bitcoin Cash is very similar to Bitcoin, but they wanted to make the cryptocurrency actually scalable. To show you what I mean, Bitcoin can only process like five transactions a second, which is really, really slow using today's fast-paced economic system. Bitcoin Cash simply increased the block size so that more transactions could happen per second, up to 60 per second, which is a huge improvement. We'll probably make a specific video about Bitcoin Cash as well. So if you've already hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications too. Finishing up, just as the forks in our lives, Ethereum and other projects will continue to have forks as they progress. As we end this video, we want to ask you a question. What is the time in your life when you've been in a fork position, where one decision could completely change the course of your life? Ours was creating this channel. If you want to know more about the behind the scenes of this channel and our motivations, let us know if you'd listen to a podcast about each episode that's a little more unscripted. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We hope that you've enjoyed it. We really hope that maybe you've learned something. And most of all, we hope to see you in the next video.